Good morning. Welcome back to Morning at NTV. My name is Malaki Vilaudera. Before we get into the solution segment, let me bring you up to speed with some news updates. And we have sad news of the passing of the former Attorney General, Peter Nyombi. He actually passed away yesterday at SAS Clinic after developing breathing complications. And our news team will be giving you updates um, of the latest regarding the funeral arrangements. And of course, may his soul rest in peace. We do send our condolences to his family and friends. That will be coming to you shortly. Of course, be sure to follow our briefs and updates on our social media platforms. We are on Twitter, NTV Uganda. You can also um, get us on Facebook and YouTube. We will be sure to update you on this particular development. Moving forward, another development is today. Shima will be going to the polls and the by-elections are actually set to start off in a few minutes' time. And um, our team is also on ground and we'll be sure to bring you updates from that particular election. Um, of course, it is heated. And let's see who is going to take uh, this particular seat this time round. The other update is, we all know, and this is a discussion that we are having last week on Friday. And this is the 20th National Prayer Breakfast that is actually happening right now at Hotel Africana. Of course, this year's theme of the National Breakfast is is all hard work brings profit but mere talks lead to poverty be sure to follow that i said the twitter handle is ntv uganda we are also on facebook and youtube pages ntv uganda of course we'll be bringing you this and so much more updates let's now get back to solution segment and the discussion today is how best can we cater for the elderly in the country and so we had andrew chamagero speaking to some of them and we are actually seeing your comments on social media remember we are still on the hashtag now that's on morning at ten tv hashtag morning at ten tv that's on twitter you can also stream us live the show is live live on Facebook and YouTube pages. Bring in your views. How best can this elderly people, this beloved people amongst us, be catered for by the government? And in studios to talk about that and so much more is the MP, the Member of Parliament of Agago County, Mr. Edward McMott. Thank you so much for making time, sir. Thank you. Thank you. You are a lawyer and you're also very passionate about this subject of taking care of this special group of people amongst us, the elderly. And I'll start at this point. We saw the government rolling out uh, the social assistance grant for empowerment in the country. Of course, not every district is a beneficiary, but so far, 47 counties are, uh, 47 districts, beg your pardon, are catered for. What's your opinion on that? How is it so far? Of course, Agago County, your county, is part of the beneficiaries. How is it so far? Break it down for us. Is it working? I think uh, I'm, I'm glad that um, uh, we've started somewhere. There's always a, a beginning and, and, and a, we have a pilot that was uh, rolled out and eventually uh, a number of districts have been added. As you stated clearly, uh, we have 47 districts out of about 122 districts. Mm -hmm. So we still have a long journey to go. But uh, I think uh, uh, I'm glad that this has been done. Obviously, as uh, any new uh, 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 intervention uh, normally uh, you are you get challenges mm -hmm. it is expected what we are seeing is expected you, uh, and and many countries have gone through these challenges so uh i think uh i i have I've spoken i follow up this matter mm -hmm. i i have uh, brought a private member's bill to amend the trust law which i think really uh, uh, touches on this issue, uh, the issues of succession, issues of uh, estate administration, issues of trust generally. Um, at the end of the day, I have uh, brought a private member's bill which have been granted leave of parliament, so we are now uh, working to change the law mm. in, in this area. So um, I think it is great. We have challenges, but there's also a lot of uh, good things that okay. we can talk about. Let's get to the challenges. And of course, uh, you, let's use Agago County as our case study. 
Of course, the, 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 the elderly, beg your pardon, are getting around 25,000 per month to yes. facilitate them on their day-to-day -day activities. That's true. When you go to your county, what are these judges telling you? Is this money getting to them for sure? And if it is, how is it helping them? Are they happy about it? And them that are not getting it, what are their wars? Uh, yes, I think uh, from speaking to, there's a lot of misinformation because I, I think one of the challenges with this uh, uh, social protection uh, senior uh, citizens grant is, is, is the fund. Well, the fund as was budgeted is not enough. Uh, we have the government putting in a, uh, a chunk and, and, and the donors have also put in a chunk, but there's a real funding challenge as a result. We are seeing a situation where a lot of people who are above 65 years of age, uh, as opposed to Karamoja, where uh, even if you're 60, you're eligible. A lot of eligible elders who are supposed to be beneficiaries are not have uh, not been able to get. Uh, it is worse in the in in the rural setting, in the town councils in Agago, the 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 numbers have come down up to six or seven years of age but when you go in the rural area where poverty is really biting it is a it, because they start with the first 100 so it's the eldest who first gets it then it comes down uh, to to uh, towards 65 so we haven't covered all the eligible uh, elders who need help and in, in in situations that are very 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 dire and, and a lot of people have died without getting this benefit. So I in terms of coverage, forget about uh, the fact that Agago benefits. I know all over the country you only have 47 districts, so you can imagine what the situation is. Mm. So there's a real, uh, I mean, there's success, but there's a real big problem in terms of uh, covering every eligible uh, a person at the end of the day. So th they said the money is not much, mm. 25,000 uh, per month, as you say, which is normally supposed to be paid in, in, in two months time. But, mm. uh, but in Agago, um, what, I'm, what I know is that sometimes the money delays even after three, four months. The last time it was paid was in June. Mm. So uh, up until now, they have not yet got the money. And also, I think, um, in terms of facilitations to make sure this thing, the focal person in Agago is the community development uh, 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 officer. Mm. And uh, they get some little money at the time when the funds are put in. When that is done, there's no money for other operations. And so it, it, misinformation at the end of the day. There is a lot of misunderstanding when you speak to the elders. They probably think it is this uh, community development officers who yeah. are determining mm. who gets it and who doesn't get mm. it. Yeah, the information comes from NERA yeah. database at the yeah. end of the day. Yeah. And, um, and they don't have transport. They mm. don't have means of going. In, in many cases, when they're distributing the funds, mm. they have to combine a number of sub-counties together yeah. at the end of the day. I am told even their payment facilitation for their work in June has not been paid after now. So I do not want to just go on the negative. There's a lot of challenges, <laughs> like I said, but there's a lot of positives too. The, el the people, are, the elderly people who are getting the benefits are really happy. I mean, the cost of living is low in the villages. Some of them are used for medication. They're used to help support grandchildren. They're used for, for, for buying, uh, putting more money in the economy. Right. It's, 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 it's some sort of income. And, and it has help, I think, is of great benefit. The question is increasing it, maybe, which is a challenge because of where to get the funds uh, like from right. the side of government. and. Um, so the otherwise, if it was to uh, be fully, f uh, effectively funded, which is difficult at the end of the day, in a country like Uganda, where we are, we are, we're a poor country, with resource envelope is, is limited, we have a lot of priorities, a lot of challenges, right. and the government right now, the government policy, as you clear, I clearly understand as a legislator, is more on infrastructure development. You, when you hear the president speaks, he speaks of, of uh, the knowledge of a body, that there are critical parts of the body. If the brain dies, the heart dies, <laughs> it will die. But right. sometimes, even if the hand, the fingers are very important, you can still live with the 
a thing that is chopped off. So it clearly tells you, clearly paints a picture of mm. uh, a competing priorities. And I think the question I every day is how do we balance all these competing exactly. interests? Exactly. And you have been involved in the trust law issues in Canada. And Canada is one of the countries that has been able to put in policies and implement them with regards to taking care of their elderly. So with regards to the SAGE program that we have started out, like you pointed out, is that Uganda is a developing country. Of course, our resource pocket is not as huge as many other developed countries. Countries. With regards to wha where the government has started, the SAGE program, and it achieving its target, what can the government borrow, of course, based on what Canada is doing? What are some of these loopholes that can be fixed so we can be able to realize the intended goal of this particular program? Thank you. Uh, I, I, see, uh, I see a multi-pronged approach. Uh, a holistic approach as the way to go. The old system which I grew up in where the young take care of the elderly should also be encouraged. It should now not be left that to the government, to, to all other partners to provide, like totally. The old system should, should be encouraged and should be seen as equally important. People should not fold their hands and just wait for the government portion of things. Mm. On the side of government, uh, uh, they, there's a, a competing, like I said, very delicate balancing with lack of resources. In the, uh, the, the, the memorandum of understanding which I, which I saw uh, between the partners, clearly we are failing to put in that money. And I understand, as a legislator who is in charge of appropriation, I understand the challenges. Uh, clearly, there's a lot of unfunded priorities, priorities, unfunded priorities mm. at the end of the day. So what can be done? Uh, other than the, the old system, the, 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 the regulatory reforms, the, the, like the trust law bit, because this is governed on the basis of, um, of trust law. And, you know, the, the, the trust law, how do we deal with fraud in these areas when it comes to implementation? Mm -hmm. How do we deal with uh, abuse of trust issues? In Canada, these are heavily punished, heavily punished, uh, a, a bridge of, 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 of the criminal code. It's part of the criminal code. You background checks at the end of the day. You cannot work in in a in a in a, in a, a senior home or workers without a criminal background check. These things are very deal with financial use. I remember litigating cases where uh, people have taken money out of ATM of of, of their their elderly persons with Alzheimer's and whatever. So these are, these are things that at the end of the day we need to look at. But, um, I think we need to inculcate the culture of savings. We need to start planning better for the young people so that when they retire, there's a, there's a plan in place. The right. culture of saving needs to be done. You look at uh, uh, weddings, lots of, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of social reform that we need to do through regulation, through other, uh, other means. But uh, interestingly, when I, I thought about this uh, whole issue uh, and what came to mind, I mean, trust law, first of all, to begin with, yeah. uh, I was told in law school, and I, I empirically experienced in Canada that other than tax law, which you could actually practice, trust is one of the areas where you could actually make a lot of money. Uh, as you can see with the NSF, uh, you, you see with, uh, uh, so this, this is, I think what might be, should be considered inside of government is the, uh, you know, the, the, the insurance okay. bit, bit of it, life insurance, among others. In Canada, a similar system like this, which which with respect to social protection, the way I, I would borrow what is done with the Ontario Health Insurance Plan, which the U.S. has failed uh, to do, but in Canada, and I know in Australia, mm -hmm. they have been able to fund this a similar it is with respect to health coverage for everyone. Break it down uh, for us. How does that work? The OEF system works in such a way that at the end of the day, uh, it's a similar co system like ours. Mm -hmm. Those who make a certain threshold amount, like $21,000 in a year, 
have to make some minimum contribution. Like in Canada, they they they, they make they pay premium of around at sixty five dollars at the end of the year. But that is possible because people file individual tax. Part of the reason, uh, in, part of the problem we have in this, although we have gone to NERA, we have the national ID, the registration system is, uh, is not yet working <laughs> to yeah. the stage where you can easily analyze that and things like that. So when people file tax at the end of the year, which is a prerequisite for getting any benefit, if you not file your tax, whether you made zero income, you didn't have w uh, any income at all, you will not be able to access any government benefit. Mm. So at the end of the day, you get to know what somebody makes. In, in a country like Uganda, even if somebody was rich and he was above 65 or is 80 or 100 and is uh, is rich, how do you... Uh, make sure that this person, you know, spares for the other. How do we make right. sure those who have care for those who do not have? At the end of the day, so the whole OIP system, the Ontario Health Insurance Premium Plan, uh, make sure that if you hand high, you contribute more. Mm. So you kind of shoulder those who are uh, not making a lot of money. And okay. you can clearly tell those who are not making a lot so of money. So there are clear there's structures a residency to just yes. put those records yes. in place. Okay. And there's also a residency requirement. Mm. At the end of the day, you must have lived in the country for about 10 years uh, before you can be eligible to this. There's a, you should, even when you are determined to be eligible on your benefits, there's also a residency requirement at the end of the day. Here, uh, in our case, it's more of national ID data. Let me ask you, now that we're talking about that breaking down of uh, the elderly, them that, of course, can afford it, and them that are in dire need of these particular facilitations by government, just the other day we saw... Um, the workers' union uh, demanding that NSSF should be paying the pensions to the workers immediately without um, keeping them because the discussion has been once someone retires, once someone is retrenched, it's only wise that you don't give them the entire savings, that maybe you help them to invest it better and let their money work for them and stuff like that. With this particular move, is it wise to do that? to give people the savings once they retire full in total amount? I think there are, there are different categories of, uh, of, uh, of payments. Some of them could be given a lump sum, some of them could be given uh, you know, uh, regularly to mm. help them uh, use it. So I, I think it, all that can be structured. I know that the in, in, in so, like in Canada, they have the survivor's benefit, which is paid in a lump sum mm -hmm. form. There are other payments that are, that are made in that kind. So I think we need to look at the whole structure and make sure that, um, because all those are very important uh, interests that mm. you need to cater for. If you give all the money and somebody squanders it, maybe they are aged and there are issues, you know, there can be issues. Mm. Uh, I, I think in that case, you would have been a bit irresponsible at the end of the day, but also in some ways you need to give them. So there are benefits and merits and demerits okay. which we need to carefully look at. All right. Yeah. But over and above that, it's not wise to just give people who are retired a lump sum of their saving. It's always good to give them options on how they can invest it better to cater for their elderly stage in life. I think so. There right. should be some regular payment moving forward at the end of the day. Uh, but 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 you could also structure that portion of that is given in a lump sum way, mm. but it also depends on the, the, the whole amount that you're dealing with at the end of the day. You actually yeah. mentioned that uh, you went ahead and moved a motion for a private uh, member's bill early this year in Parliament. Break it down for us. What exactly is this motion about? Uh, uh, the, uh, I brought a private member's bill uh, to uh, basically repeal uh, what we've seen is that our trust law since the, 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 the colonial time they have not been amended. And we have uh, a lot of um, other acts that have been passed since then in different areas and it becomes uh, a very difficult thing. A lot of things have changed. Uh, so uh, uh, we, need to, we need to first of all make sure that uh, we have uh, uh, one piece of 
Doki uh, of, of the Trusty Act that at the end of the day you can easily make reference to and you know so they, it, it, it gets it touches a number of areas okay. issues of, of succession uh, issues uh, of land among other things so especially with respect to the matter that we are dealing with the succession law is part of the trust issue mm. a lot of uh, elderly people uh, a majority of them who have not been in formal employment probably die intestate. So um, the issues of administration of estate at the end of the day, which brings a lot of conflicts if it is not clearly. Uh, so th those are the areas we, we probably need to focus on and, and, and narrow down. But, but it's an it's a, it's a all big project that right. uh, it, uh, I may not be able to finish. But, 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 mm -hmm. but when it comes to estate administration yeah. um, and, and based on what is provided for in the law right now, what are these gaps that you've been able to point out to? Because I know the issue of you know, passing down the estate has been a great issue. Um, of course, we've seen statistics and it's the majority, actually it's the leading cause of family clashes and family issues. So with regards to that and what the law provides currently, what are some of these loopholes that need to be fixed, um, especially with regards to pushing even for these elderly people to put down wills, like you mentioned, it's quite risky for someone not to have a will and is old because once you die in test it, then um, of course your family will be prone to all these other issues to come and fight for, 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 for your estate and stuff like that. So what are some of these gaps that are quick fixes that need to be addressed? I think um, uh, Uganda is very unique uh, as opposed to the way trust law operates elsewhere. I think the level of uh, uh, the literacy level uh, uh, is one of the areas where we have had challenges. So there are, like for respect to a will, there are very many types of wills. They, you can have a handwritten will and it, it, all these things. So we, which is easy for our kind of population, vulnerable elderly people to deal with. So we need to have a law in place that, that recognizes that. That, that is not just set for the elite urban group and thing like that. So they, they, there must be uh, systems in place mm -hmm. uh, that, um, that uh, makes that without a lot of red tapes, without a lot of bureaucracy that makes it possible. And there has to be a lot of sensitization. And, and I think uh, these obligations must be, uh, you know, we must make it binding in law. For, for for the government or the whichever uh, players are in this field to mm. try to make sure that uh, we help our people with respect to uh, estate administration. So uh, we are reviewing the whole thing and uh, there's a, a number of proposals on the table. We're mm. going to start processing the bill that we've had inputs from the Uganda Law Society and uh, a number of other uh, groups and we still tomorrow, uh, not tomorrow, after uh, independence, I, I have a meeting with a, a leading expert and, and we're going to further look into uh, different provisions mm. that can that can be used to, to deal with this issue. Okay. Yes. Yeah. All right. Of course, we've seen, like we mentioned, um, where the government has been able to at least make a, you know, a move and a milestone that we can call um, is with the SAGE program. But mm. over and above that, what other programs can the government implement just to better cater for the elderly in society without necessarily having to look deeper into issues to do with financing and you know funds and stuff like that what are, what are, what other options are there i think uh, at the end of the day when we give this money what are we looking at we in most cases primarily you you're looking at health care yeah, so how can we make health care work in, in in all these places how can we uh, make sure that it's tailored to meet the needs of the elderly people. Uh, how can we have the, the public health component of this thing incorporated in our healthcare system at the end of the day? How can we make sure their, Im uh, their, their, their insurance, the, the, the government can come up with an insurance plan and which they, which they can guarantee. Uh, it is up in Canada, in real estate, in all that. You, you don't leave it just to to, to the players in the market. So I think the government can come in that area and, and try to use uh, premium, like I say, to, to address this issue. Mm -hmm. The other uh, 
area, of course, is uh, the, uh, at the end of the day the transport sector, uh, education. At the end of the day, all these things, because a lot of the times now the elderly people are. You hear the twenty-five thousand is being used to pay grandchildren at right. the end of the day. So in Canada, uh, when I was in Canada and when I visited Canada recently, as of even August, when you go there, you would see what ordinarily in Uganda people would think is hotel. Uh, you would find that they are actually senior senior homes, mm. seniors' home. So uh, I think they, they have uh, put in infrastructures. They have put in uh, affordable homes for the elderly people. They have obviously <laughs> the challenge for us here is the money right. <laughs> at the end of the day. Yes. But uh, but uh, if uh, I think more importantly, I think we need even this money that we are giving twenty five whatever. If it was somehow put up in a pool, if it was put up in, in uh, put up in investments, uh, you know, invest restricted investment areas, uh, I think we probably it is a lot of money together right. that could be used to make more money that eventually would be given uh, would be used to help the elderly people. Okay. So, uh, I think. Yeah, service provision at the end of the day All in right. different sectors. Okay, as we come to a close, how best can me and the viewer and any other person um, do to just be able to cater for our phase in life once we get old? And also, what can we be able to do? Because you said that it's not just about the government to cater for the elderly. We also have a role to play as uh, the grandchildren, as the children. So how best can we cater for our parents when it comes to just taking care of them and taking care of their health? Is it advisable to, of course, get them into insurance that you pay premiums to, or what options are there? Now you can start with us taking care of our lives once we get to that phase of being old and then we get to also how best we can cater for our own parents our own judges um, of course as their health deteriorates as they get older thank you uh, I, I one of the books that is very common that I know the seven habits of highly effective people talks of uh, first habit begin begin with the hand inside mm. So when planning right from the beginning, forecast, don't be reactionary. Look at retirement and start planning backward. So uh, the, the culture of saving. A lot of people, when they have money at this age and all that, they're uh, blindfolded. They spend the money reckless in very many other areas to impress people that they don't know with what they don't have, borrowing among other things. So the culture of saving needs to be inculcated. Mm. I think we need sensitization. We need... Uh, People need to take interest in, 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 in learning from other people's experiences. The culture of reading and understanding this thing needs to be in place. Uh, we talked of the premium. Me, I think at, a, at the government level, the, the premium system is uh, something that I think would work. You throw it up to the insurance company, pay your premium at the end of the day, make sure this insurance uh, plan doesn't. Uh, collapse at the end of the day, that would be the guarantee. But uh, you can allow the different actors to come in place and uh, uh, put in money. I know in Canada there's what they call RISP, mm -hmm. Registered Retirement uh, 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 Pension Plan. It is another all alternative, different from the the, the, the all security, the pension, whatever. The, it's, it's a saving that banks talk about. Uh, and every time they see your money, they are pl helping you to plan and things like that. Yeah. So investments, like savings uh, at the end of the day, I think if we all did that. And then, and then at the end of the day, this whole culture, the, which is, I think is a moral question, uh, of, of taking care of the elder. I grew up in a, in, a, in a culture where I believed that if I help an elderly person, I will get blessing. Mm -hmm. I believe my blessings or whatever, whether it is being intelligent or being healthy, was derived from my, my contribution to the elderly people. So this, this, there are certain cultural or moral uh, questions that I think um, need to also be addressed. Okay. Uh, I know in this capitalistic world uh, with liberalization and all that, that is going down the drain mm -hmm. and that's part of the challenge. So um, 
uh, both at the government level, individual level, and uh, and uh, I think uh, a multi-pronged approach, mm -hmm. like I stated, uh, um, legislative reforms, um, you know, I think all that uh, can be used. But again, also, I agree with the government that where they're competing priorities, yes. in, in like in Uganda setting where uh, resources, you, you need to be able to make money right. in all that. Without money, you can help anybody. Right. Corporate social responsibility on the sides of big corporation needs to be emphasized. But I think one of the biggest challenge in this country also is the record system. You, you see people leaving and you don't even know whether it is agricultural uh, uh, income or whatever it is. It is very hard to measure what people make at the end of the year. People are living and, and surviving right. at the end of the day. So I, I think we need to find a way of uh, 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 determining who is poor, who is not poor, and then we prioritize accordingly. And also, at the end of the day, we can increase our tax base <laughs> based on that. <laughs> I, I was shocked. Yes. I, I own a property in, in Canada, uh -huh. and, and, and for the longest time, I've always paid property tax. It's only recently that part of property in an area, that so government was trying to put in some tax. So right. there's a lot of things okay. that we could still do to make sure that we actually bring in more money and when we bring in that money how do we make sure that that money is used to make more money tax so accountability afford, yes okay yes. honorable edward mark mott mp of agago county thank you so much for coming in studios and shedding light on how best you know we and the government can do to cater for the elderly thank you so much for coming in studios Thank you. I, I wish the, the listeners uh, happy independence. I'm going for the prayer breakfast meeting. Yes. And uh, my condolence to, to the, the, the family of uh, former Attorney General uh, uh, Peter, Peter Nyombi, who, okay. who uh, has passed away. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you. So that has been the discussion on solutions segment. Remember, news updates. Uh, we have said news of the passing of the former Attorney General, Mr. Peter Nyombi. He passed away yesterday at SAS clinic here in Kampala after developing breathing complications. Of course, we will be bringing you updates with regards to funeral arrangements and many more. May his soul rest in eternal peace as an NTV. We do pass our condolences to his family and friends. The other update that you need to take note of is that Shima is going to the polls and actually the polls are underway right now. And so today, We'll be sure to get to know who then takes the seat moving forward. So our team is on ground. We will be gathering all the news for you with regards to that particular development. We also have the 20th National Prayer Breakfast happening, actually is underway at Hotel Africana. This year's theme is all hard work brings profit, but mere talks leads to poverty. Of course, we'll be crossing to that side. We are going live for that particular broadcast. So be sure to keep it here morning at NTV. Um, of course, uh, that has been it for now. We will be extending it to the National Prayer Breakfast. So what are you praying for um, for the country? Of course, that will be the discussion. Remember, we are still on the hashtag morning at NTV. You can also stream us live and drop in your comments. NTV Uganda, that's on Facebook and YouTube pages. Do have yourself a blessed day.